Welcome back. To Broad's League Heroes in the bottom left. Spawning as the Zerg on East Watch Torben. And in the top right, Burkhard. Not walling off against Zerg. Oh my god, that's a bold move. Burkhard. I'm not. Burkhard. His name is Burhard. The K is silent. As we all know. So, Burhard. We'll have to see. Well, Protoss versus Zerg. And it's looking like a one base pressure. We'll see. Both these players seem to have a pretty good grasp of how they want to open up. Eastwatch, the largest map with the most bases in all of the StarCraft map pool at this point uh, on the ladder. So a lot of space to work with, which some players will use very creatively, some players will use deceptively, and some players won't use at all. But we'll see what kind of... Okay, well, quite an opportunist is Burhard. As we see... Him, him seeing an expansion on the way. Now, there's a pool already done, but building a forge and a cyber core at once, it appears he does want to cannon rush this. That wasn't his plan off the bat. For better or for worse, or, or because... I'm, let me just slide over here. Let me slide into those D... Uh, okay. But he sees an opportunity. Even if the hatch is about to finish this second and Creep is about to take over this entire location... He's gonna go for it. A single cannon on the way. On the creep as well. Just that last second. While a Twilight Council is building. So a very, very committed and opportunistic Protoss cheese here. I'm not gonna say good. I'll just say opportunistic. And that that's, has a positive connotation. It looks like this cannon is actually gonna finish up. But there are more on the way behind. The shields are already down, the HP under fire. But one cannon should still beat one queen just barely from this position. A second queen is coming up, but so is a shield battery. Will they finish it in time? It looks like the answer is no. The, the queen survives with 7 HP. Going to the south here. Will there be some retargeting? More queens doing their best. The shield battery finishing up. The queens trying to get in position. The shield battery regenerating the shields of this cannon. I'm not sure the queens are really respecting the danger right now. He's got three of them all in the red. Beautiful velvet colors. But do they want to be dead? It appears they do. Get a little bit closer. One goes down. The second one retargeted onto the hatchery. Looks like it should be able to lay down the kill. Of course, why wouldn't there be a dark shrine on the way? at the three minute mark with a delayed cannon rush. Because of course, of course there is. So, a rough and tumble start here. Burhard managing to take out one of the hatcheries, but there's still one to go. He does not have an expansion himself. He's continuing to build up in his main base, which is now sporting four gateways. No warp gate research, which seems like a pretty major oversight if he wants to go for Dark Templar. And it, it seems he's going to go down for an expansion. There are still two cannons and a shield battery. These are very distracting to most Zerg players, but not necessarily... Where is the... Wait, what? Okay, so... um, Screw the expanding part of... Oh my... Does he... Okay, well he knows now. And the Ewoks will look on... As this cannon rush completes. But little does he know there's a third hatchery here. Plus one shields on the way. Because why wouldn't we go for plus one shields? To of course, as you know, buff those cannons. The Ewoks, not snitches. Not going to sound the alarm. But the seeing of cannons building at this base may give something away. It's still a one base for Burhard here.
His probe will slip through. Go to the other side. Check for a base. He still ha he has missed one. This is a key point. He has missed one base. The cannons will come up with a shield battery. I don't see this one being broken. 32 to 24 supply. This is happening. Warp gate is now finishing up. Plus one shields as well. The Dark Shrine is done. But the real cloak for Dark Templar is not having any Dark Templar at all. Three queens roam around the creep. A, a wild drone to the opposite side of the map. And now Burkhard, Bur, Bur, Burkehard, Burhard has deemed it appropriate to ex has deemed it appropriate to ha, ha, has deemed it appro uh, appropriate to expand for Dark Templar Warpian. There is no detection in the main. He's got nothing. Not only will he not see this coming, he'll not see this coming. 40 T's. There is a lair. He's just kind of sitting there. He's he's gonna he's gonna give away the Dark Templar by attacking a roach. And then go into the mineral line. There are no overseers. Slicing the queens to pieces. There's no overseer on the way. More queens are coming back. He's giving time for the spore crawler though. Three more DTs. The refugee drones! The Spore Crawler's on the way. He's successfully distracted the Dark Templar for quite a while now. But the DTs decide instead of actually attacking and killing things, they want to join up with their friends. The Transfuses may have saved the day. The Scythes continue to slice through. He goes back for some shields. Another DT being warped in. The cannons are helping out. Such a close fight here. The queen will be assassinated. The DT, the, the roach distracted by the rock. Roach speed has completed. There's only going to be four roaches, though. More DTs are on the way in. He's going to be on two bases, his Burkhard. Another drone being taken out. It's 19 drones to 23 probes, but this DT going to be finished off. The supply is nearly even. This Dark Templar as well, well, should be chased down and killed. The Overseer a little bit late on the draw. The entire investment... I don't know if Ravagers are necessarily the better call, but he's going for it. Torben is relatively safely mining at this base. He will send out another drone. More DTs being taken out, but the Ravagers trying to micro against them. The roaches were sliced up. The dodges. Corrosive Bile could do a number on the Dark Templar. Of course, a probe... Neither of them see each other. There's already a probe prepared over here from the post-cannon rush. But we're still in this incredibly low economy situation. Burkhard now actually looking towards some defenses as he begins to mine out of his main. I don't think Torbin going to have the problem of mining out of his main for a while yet. Three Stalkers and two Dark Templar against two Ravagers and that's it. I mean, there's going to be a spine. Six roaches on the way. Corrosive Bile comes out. He can micro against the DTs. One roach will be sliced up, eviscerated, but the DTs melting as well. He can fight against the Stalkers. It looks like he's actually going to take a win. The, the Overseer is targeted down, but at what cost, as the Stalkers are going to be taken out. Four more Stalkers warping in. One Stalker patrolling around. This is still happening. There are drones throughout the map. Overlord scattered as well. It's it's very difficult to foresee what's going to happen next. As Burkhard doesn't have the army to end the game, but neither does Torben. With the army supply being 18 to 10 respectively, and some of that is in Queens. The spine crawler is moving to the front. Torben will try to lock off his main. He still has that expansion. His lifeline, his lifeblood. But it seems both players are kind of forced to slow down. As now both have basic defenses. Wait, I take it back, Burkhard. Whooped in a lot of stalkers, but Corrosive Biles will land! Big connection. Shields can be replaced, but health cannot. The Protoss have not developed the technology to actually heal or repair their units. They are far too proud. 
Corbin holds the line. He's up 20 supply, but once again, he can't really move out with this Road to Ravager very effectively. The main bay is drawing up the Overlord Scouts, the expansion here. <sighs> three for three. Another cannon rush. Burkhard had this pylon, well, had the probe in the corner. It seems the same probe, actually, might be pulling off a third cannon rush, which will lead him to think maybe there's more than meets the eye. And go for a third himself. These cannons come online. The one base he missed. The one. It's a lot of stalkers for Burkhardt. I don't know if there can be a fight here. There are cannons on the back line. The shield battery with a little bit of regenerative capacity. This drone trying to slip out. No. More corrosive biles. Eats, eats a couple with the zerglings, but that's a lot of roaches and that's a long warp in as well. The stalkers don't, only, only plus one shields isn't really going to make the difference. The shield battery helps, but Torben is slowly breaking out. There's no army at home. There's a single cannon for defense. Already building the assimilators. Some more zealots on the way. Torben's starting to bank up some money. He hasn't added on any tech. Is getting on supply bot. The stalkers are trying to come up the ramp. That's a bold move. Almost gets the spine crawler, but loses a lot in the process. Two DTs will come out. Going over to the right side. There are, there is a spore and spine combination. It shouldn't be too dangerous. He can finally remove the contain. A dozen minutes into the match, stalkers being warped in, but they will remain on ire. The DT is coming up, but the spine crawler should be enough to shut this down. He's trying to target it. One, one, one spine kills a DT, right? Like, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought there was some weird math at play there. Torben triple expanding now that he has been freed from the prison of cannons and shield batteries and dark templar and stalkers. Finally able to... Uh, like a peacock, stretch his wings and fly. The Overseer coming up. These DTs being shut down. This cannon rush can be removed. Leaving only one on the map. The Ewoks nod and rave approvingly. And Torben will hold on. He's removed the cannon rushes. Burkhard doesn't have any units but four DTs. So if Tor, I think Torben has what it takes. It, it was wasn't clear, but it seems that Torben now has the forces with which to move across the map and claim a hard-earned victory. Victory. <laughs> Is this happening? The abandoned crane arm in, in in the grass here, serving as very mild cover for this pylon. Devil's in the details. It's still a lot of DTs. If the Overseer isn't select all armied in, there could still be some danger. But Torben has held. He's consolidated his forces. He now has all of the expansions. What the fuck? Stargate Command being warped in on the left side because, of course, what would the transition be from multiple failed, eventually failed cannon rushes, but four stargates in a random location on the map that is about to be scouted when he gives away with these DTs. When this, ar this army's just gonna scout it! What? He's building cannons, but, like, He's used the DTs to, with the next level mind games. He's going to go for four Stargates because no one ever expects four Stargates. But 
at the same time, no one ever expects DTs to draw a bunch of roaches into those Stargates. So Burkhardt is so many steps ahead right now. He's running another race. Four Void Rays on the way. I have the sneaking suspicion they're not going to make it. So what the, the thing no one expected even harder was not that there would be four Stargates, but that those four Stargates would immediately be scouted and killed. I just... It, 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 it makes so little sense, it almost seems terrible. But I have to trust that Burkhard has what it takes to come out on top. As a Protoss player, as a very cerebral, high IQ, Rick and Morty watching player, not only four Stargates, but what is he going to expect the least? If you just lost four Stargates on the map, of course you're going to build six more at your fourth base. Four, six, two, three cannon rushes. All right, think about it. Maru has won one GSL championship now. If you think about it, one, three, four, six, nine, four, two, zero. It makes sense. Whoa. I see where he's going with this. Torben has five bases. That probe slipping through time and space. Plus three shields. Only roaches. There is chitinous plating on the way for ultralis. No ultralis yet. But uh, I'm sure we'll get there. Adrenal glands. Muscular augments, a little bit of everything. He's got 76 drones. He's got all the economy available to him. Six Void Rays are on the way, though. He's going to need that anti-air. That's not enough in the way of Queens. Six Void Rays. Sue has lost seven GSL finals. Or is it six? Or is it seven? But is it really about the Void Rays? The world may never know. Now, here's the conspiracy theory they're not telling you. Everybody says the Earth is flat. They're wrong. Okay, I hate to go against the grain. They're wrong. What they don't tell you is that when we landed on the moon, and we did land on the moon, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to get the word out there, and I, I see so was Burkhard. When we landed on the moon, what we found out was disturbing. The Earth is not flat. That's absolutely ridiculous. The moon is flat. Which explains everything. Six Void Rays is going to add up. That's going to be a dozen. Plus three shields. The attack. Torben finally at with some aggressive potential. The cannons will rush down the Overlord, but Stargate Command is well defended. He never expected this, not after killing four Stargates on the other side. The ultimate mind game. Torben with 194 supply dives in towards the natural. The main base is exposed. The natural is nearly dried up. Are there enough void? Whoa, he's got to go for the base train. He says, I have what I need. I have the Stargates. That's all I can dream of. There are two Spires, three Ultralists not known for their Void Ray killing capacity. This base is gone, purified off the map. Here comes the main. All right, the Void Ray is melting through. A lot of bases exposed. All the tech is in the main, though. He's trying to make Spore Crawlers, but it might be too little too late. Torben, still in 174 supply. The main base being gutted. It's gone. No contest, no defense. But there are still 16 Void Rays and a goddamn dream here for Burkhard. Ultra's joining into the party. This is still... Stargate Command is still online. But he needs to construct additional pylons. Spore Crawlers fully charged, melting through the main. Torben has nothing to defend. He's building two spires. Where are those spires? In the top, in the northern corner of the map. I don't even know if you can call that a corner. But more bases can be exposed. The Ultras can take the cannon hits. 
the spawning pool. The Hydra is done. Right before Groove Spines will be taken out. 68-71. No, no, no. The Groove Spines will finish just in time. That means the Hydras are at maximum capacity. Where are these Evolution Chambers upgrading? Uh, well, not in the ideal position. Will Stargate Command hold? All right. The main base has been melted. The Protoss aren't... Will he recall? That's the choice. There aren't that many Hydras. Does he have what it takes? The Ultras are going around. He can't quite get through the cannons. The cannons, once again, a massive sticking point. There's enough energy for a recall. Does he make the choice? Does he take the plunge? The Void Ray is on the other side. Remember, in order to play a game of StarCraft and not be eliminated, you still must have buildings. The Forge is gone. He can't rebuild cannons. Two spawning pools in production. One gonna be melted. The Void Ray is still continuing to work through. They're down, down to 39 drones. The amount of hatcheries is dropping quickly, but the amount on the next side is at one. The long distance, well, actually the long distance pathing from the probes. This base has been scouted out by Torben. He can just take it out. Unfortunately, Protoss has not developed the technology that the hyper-advanced ter Terrans have in which their buildings can fly. They are too proud. There's just this Nexus. The Void Rays continue their purification spree. Torben dropping in supply. He can rebuild. He has enough money for like 40 mutas. All he has to do is not wait. The spires are at this base. He's not supply blocked. Where are the mutas? He only he has 29 larva. Now is the time. A lot of that larva is in the main. He's building drones. No, no. He's losing his lot. He could build so many mutas and it might not be enough to kill the void rays on their own or corruptors or whatever. This base is under fire. A forge is coming back online. He needs to hold this. These are his only buildings. One Nexus, four pylons, two assimilators. Torben is on the move. There needs to be a recall. There needs to be a recall. He's moving too slow. He's building Nexi on the map. There's a probe on the map because of course there is. 69 creep tumors. Not important, but I thought it was important to point out. He's melting through this base, building more Nexi. He has enough money for four more. This is the last potential mining base for now. He doesn't recall, he doesn't give a fuck, as right now the Void Rays are moving through, the Spires are the only real choice for anti-air. But Torben hasn't scouted the base. There are, there is one extractor, two hatches building, and two Nexi building. How has it come to this? As we, we... We ask ourselves. This game was so intense. Even my frames couldn't handle it. But we're back. There are two bases versus two bases. Torben is mining again. This Nexus will fall. There's a single heroic probe. Desperately making buildings all throughout the map. It is nine Hydras and two Queens. Not a, not a match for 20 Void Rays. With 1-3-1. One, one. The Queens. <coughs> burnt. The Hydras on the run. Where is the hero probe? The probe died. Where did the probe die? I have no idea, but somehow the probe died. There are no probes left. This Nexus needs, he needs to recall. This is it, this is his only building. He, well, he has one pylon and one Nexus. He needs to re, now is the time. He needs to. He has one pylon. He doesn't know how to recall. If this Nexus falls, that's it. That's lights out. I mean, he has one pylon. She charges up the Void Rays, which doesn't, he can no longer build probes. There's one pylon in the corner. The ultra, does he see it? He doesn't see it. So, I, there's, there's one pylon, but there are too many. The fleet, the fleet holds over the pylon. 
There's no ant. There's a spawning pool done. Burrow is on the way. Void rays are on the chase. They're about to see the main has been re expanded to. It's 14, 15 drones now. He doesn't have any tech, though. He can only build. The void rays are splitting off. Where are the ultralisks? There are two ultras and seven orchards. Can he dive on that pylon and kill it? That's it. He has no ability. There is no ability to rebuild any more buildings on this map. There are no probes. There's no nexus. And even if he did have those, he's supply blocked. He can't rebuild probes. This void ray going to work. If he splits off too many void rays, five spore, 12 spore crawlers on the way. He just spent all of his money on spore crawlers. All of it. He has 12 drones left. Does he even see the pilot? Torment, I mean, he sees he's being revealed. The spore crawlers almost chase it down. He sees he's being revealed, but like, does he actually see there's a... He sees it, but does he see it? The internal, eternal question here. More overlords are being killed, which is quite a blow. There's not much money to rebuild with. More drones are going to fall. He charges up the void ray and just ignores the drones. Goes back to the drones. Can't figure out what he wants. More spore crawlers, but Torben is broke. Two more void rays on the way. If he splits off too many void rays, then the ultras and roaches can kill the pylon. I don't... He can dodge out the spores here. He charges up. We'll kill the nexus. He doesn't know he can cancel the charge, though. That much is apparent. The spores are on the chase. You can cancel the... Well, of course. He's committed. But gets away with really no hull damage. This base under cleansing fire. I mean... Torbin now has nine drones. He has 14 spores. But using shields. Oh my. Oh, he burrowed the ultras. What a play. He's only leaving four. But. Oh. For the backstab. The, the void rays are committed on the other side. He's waiting. He's waiting. Next. He researched burrow for this moment. When will he strike? When does Torben? Does Torben remember he burrowed those ultras? This is also an important question. The void rays are all charged. This base is well fortified. He's got a lair on the way. But now there's a supply block as well. Like the ultras. Does he have a hotkey? He has a hotkey. That's his only hotkey. He's very committed. Oh, it, what is he going for? One will be charged up, but the spores are all connecting. He's in. The belly of the beast here. He's fighting the spores. He's losing void rays. But. He will kill all the spores. There's no way to detect burrowed units. He has no way to do that. 13 void rays remain. There's no money for another hatch. We're getting to the point where he can't rebuild hatcheries. In which case... There, there's still a potential for either side to win this game. I don't know what taking... Burkhardt has a path... Like, this pylon and this hatchery are the only relevant building. There are five spore crawlers running around. They can be killed. The void rays move back. He's looking for bases. He misses. Attack move is a useful skill to have. He's, he's, it, Torben has thrown away the opportunity to build anti-air, but he can still kill the, oh no. All the void rays are gone. Okay. It, on it, like it can still, Torben could potentially rebuild, but almost has no chance at mining enough. But all he needs to do is kill the pylon. You don't need to kill the void race. You just need to kill the pylon. There is no ability for additional pylons to be constructed. 
There's no probe for a nexus. There's nothing. But that pylon is tucked in, and those are dangerous void rays. That's all he's got left. Torben is supply block now. He can't even afford to really rebuild overlords, and he's losing more and more. His base is going to be scouted at some point. Oh, Burkhard splitting off more void rays, but it 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 all comes down. Oh, the last base, he can't rebuild hatches. That's it, Torben's done. He's done mining. He cannot rebuild hatcheries. He can maybe burrow the spore crawlers near the pylon to distract the void rays for long enough. That's it. There's there's five spores running around. One extractor. Wait, whoa, whoa. Does he have anything else building? This is his only building building. This is it. He's dead. Oh, wait, no. No, the spore crawlers. The spore crawlers. They, they might not show up in the units tab, but they count. They count as buildings. Okay. I panicked for a second because he was out of buildings. But no, the spore crawlers, even if they're uprooted, they don't show up in the structures tab, but they still count as buildings. Okay. Extractor on this side. Oh, here, he's going for it! He goes for the pylon! He's going for the play! That's it! The pylon, he wins! That, he could've, he just goes! And that, there were five roaches, there were enough roaches, he wins! He just goes for it with five spore crawlers. We weren't sure, but enough void rays were split off. He just pops up and claims his victory. Pylons without nearly as much danger as we might have thought to stop. But only four void rays were not enough to do the critical damage in time. That's it. It all ends. It's all over. Just like that. I mean, if there were 15 void rays here, can they actually get enough damage done? That's the question. Or 12 void rays? But four void rays were not enough. He almost killed the ultra almost instantly. So... It's a, it, yeah, that question can be asked by historians for decades into the future. Okay, I'm sure when we reference the 100-year anniversary of StarCraft, this game will be on that list of games that changed StarCraft history. As Torben and Burkhard showed grit, tenacity, uh, creativity, um, a willingness to make very questionable decisions... But at the end of the day, Torben comes out from underground and brings it out on top. So, um, 